This month's Power Query challenge, on the face of it, looks quite simple. I want to take a column and flip it around into a record per person. However, it's a little bit trickier than you think, and there's a couple of little traps. So thank you to Nizam, Leon, Henrietta, Chris, Dan Daniel, Ivan, Collie, more people for submitting all their approaches. There's two main methods that people have used and a couple of variations on that. I'll show you how. Let's go. So here's the scenario. We've got this sort of nicely laid out data. This is how data should be laid out. A nice column of names, a nice column of qualifications. Perfect for doing analysis, except if you want to actually produce a table that looks like this. And if you add more qualifications to this table here with more people, it needs to get longer and the table needs to get wider. So if John had another qualification, it'd be qualification four. And this is where some of the, the tricks and tips arise. So let's say there's two approaches that people have generally used who've submitted. Thanks to everybody for submitting. I'm gonna show you the two main techniques. So right click, get ta data from table slash range. Thankfully, this is now stuck as this name. It's no longer going to be called from sheet, which is great in my view. Okay, so here we go. And let me zoom in a little bit, control shift plus. So here we've got our list. So what I need to do and approach this, I need to group everything by person. So group all the qualifications by person and then try and explode out a little horizontal list, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do in order to get my elements to sort properly in that expanded column is just to sort this qualification column. So I'm just gonna go sort ascending. So that's the sort of qualifications sorted. Now, I don't know if this is overkill, but there's certain scenarios where Power Query doesn't remember the sort when you do the next step. So I'm in the habit of just adding an index column or wrapping the function in table.buffer just to add a new step before I do a group by. This may be overkill. If somebody knows it's overkill, please comment in the notes below. So I've done that. Right, now I just wanna do a grouping. This index column isn't gonna be used for anything, by the way, it just sort of hard codes in, if you like, not really the right word, the sort order. Sometimes Power Query forgets the sort order if you don't do this. Again, if somebody knows that I'm making that up, please comment, or if it's not valid anymore, please comment. So I wanna group by name and qualification. Okay, so I'm gonna go onto the uh, home tab and I'm gonna go to the group by button. I've got the name already selected, so that's what ends up in this first box. So I want to go, okay, I want all the rows, and you can call it whatever you want. Let's call it um, data and click OK. And now it's grouped and there's John. And in this little table, you can see John's three roles. So that's the first part of this, okay, is, is grouping that together, which is great. Then I want to just grab these qualifications and sort of concatenate them together, join them together um, into a nice little list. And a way to do that is just to grab this column. So you can do this by going to the add column, custom column. You've got to write a little bit of M code, okay? But it's not too hard. I'll call this new column qualifications. And it's table dot column. Yeah, I want to grab the column. So here we go. Table dot column. Open the bracket. So it says table is table. Well, the actual table is this data. That table there is in the column called data. So for every row, that little table is data. Okay, so I can even double click on it over here. Comma. And then it says column adds text. So the column is called qualification. I've got to enter it as text. So double quotes, qualification. And then close the bracket on the end and click okay. 
And now, if I click on the word list, I've got a little list with John's qualification. Or if I go here, accountant and barber, click on Tom there, there you go, accountant and barber. So that little list is what I need. And then to get that list into the row, you just use this expand button and you can extract the values rather than breaking it out into a row for each, which we don't need. That was how it came in. We want to extract the values and you can use a delimiter. Okay, you can use a comma, you can use whatever you want. Personal preference for me, I go to custom and I put a pipe symbol in there, which is the shift and slash key. You know, maybe one of your qualifications has got a comma in it. So to avoid that being an issue, okay, we'll do that. And there we go. We've now got this with the pipes. And by doing that, we can now split the column. So here we go, right click, split column by delimiter, okay, using that pipe. It grabs the pipe here and we want to do it for each occurrence. Now this is the misleading bit, okay? Because what it really does is hard codes in this sort of three columns, if I expand out this advanced option. So check what happens, if I click okay, it expands it out, which is great. Okay, perfect, this is exactly what I'm after. But if I delete this change type step, which I don't really need, this split column by delimiter step, check it out. It's done qualifications one, two, three. That is now hard coded in the code. I don't want that, right? Because if I had a fourth qualification, it won't show up. Okay, so what do I do? Well, this is where there's sort of two main approaches. My hacky approach, which a few other people submitted as well, and then a bit more of an elegant approach, should we say. So what should we do? Okay, well, the hacky approach. We'll click on the little cog next to split column by delimiter. Okay, we'll go advanced options, and we'll make this number massive, let's say 100. Okay, way more than we'll ever need in terms of qualifications. We click OK. And again, make sure you delete this change type step that gets auto-generated. It's really annoying. So here we've got all these qualifications it's split out into. Like I say, this is the hacky approach. But look, we've got all these qualifications, but we don't want to return all those into Excel. So here's the real sort of hack, is that if I get rid of this data column now, okay, actually, I'm going to go back a level. I'm going to go back up here and once we've extracted this, before I do the split column, you know, I'm actually going to remove this one just to, I don't need it anymore. Okay, and we split the column. Right, so what I do is an unpivot repivot. Okay, so check this out. Unpivoting removes nulls. So all those null columns will disappear. So I highlight this first column, the name, right click, unpivot other columns okay and all the nulls disappear okay and then we just pivot it back so we can just click on the uh, attribute column go to the transform tab go to pivot column okay so we're going to pivot the attribute column so there are the names in the columns attribute so we'll create new columns so for qualification one and then the, the actual values is the item from the value, and we click OK. Oh, sorry, go back here. I always forget about this advanced option. Don't aggregate. There we go. So a bit of a hack, but it's fully refreshable. And nicely, the names also sort automatically for you. You might want to put a sort on here as well, just to make sure. So that's approach one. Oh, one thing before I finish this little example and show you a, a, a more, let's say, elegant approach. I just want to bring up something that Collie mentioned when in, in their submission. Um, they mentioned that um, when you sort these qualifications, lowercase text sorts after all the uppercase text sorts. So just be aware of that. I didn't realize that was a thing. So what you could do before the sorting rows, right click, okay, say transform, 
and say capitalize each word or uppercase it or add an extra column if you need to and sort that. So yeah, sorting text, um, actually capital letters, sort all the capital letters, A to Z, will sort before the lowercase. Um, bit of a weird one. So thanks for pointing that out, Colleen. Okay, here's the next trick. A more elegant way rather than the unpivot, repivot to get that split. Okay, so I'm just gonna duplicate this column, uh, duplicate this query, sorry. And I'm gonna go as far down here to the, uh, where did the split happen? We removed those columns. Okay, this split. I'm actually gonna delete until the end and say delete so that all the remaining steps. Okay, so we get to this spot, same approach. Okay, using the grouping, etc. But it's splitting this. So check this out. If I split this column, right click, split column by delimiter. Okay, this number three here is in here. If I click OK, get rid of the change type step. That's just annoying. Okay, so this, this formula, table dot split column, has the, this little record set in here, okay? What you can do, you can get rid of that, just from the curly bracket to the curly bracket, get rid of it, and you can put a number of columns instead. So let's say I wanted to split it into, I don't know, four columns, and press enter. You'll notice now that I've got four columns. Again, my change type step comes in, which is a bit annoying, turn that off. So here we go, here's the four columns. So I wanna make this, four dynamic. So how do I get that four? Well, or whatever number I need to be. Well, that number needs to be the, the maximum number of qualifications that somebody has. So if I go back to my list here, say, I've got one, two, three. Okay. I just want to get, you know, there's three is the maximum number of qualifications. So I need to split it into three columns. Okay. So how do I get the number items. Well, there's a couple of ways, but one nice way is under the grouped rows step, if I click on the cog back here and bring up my grouped rows, what I can do is go to the advanced section and say add an aggregation and give me a count and I'll call this number of qual, uh, n, keep it nice and simple because you're going to reference this word later, n quals, okay, for number of qualifications. Click OK. So here we go, this column here, three, two, two, three, two, okay, great. So that's my number of qualifications. So if I come back here to this sort of step, and I'll delete this split column by delimiter, okay. So I've got this number. Now I just want the maximum of that column. So what I could do, and just to sort of split it out rather than do it all in the code, I could refer to this column by going right click and drill down. Okay, so it's called remove column end quals. Actually, let's make this simpler. Let's call this ready to split. I'm a big fan of naming my steps when I'm doing these sorts of things because it makes it easier to refer to. Okay, so we're ready to split. So we're ready to split this column. So we go here, we right click, we drill down. See, ready to split n quals. And I just want, let's say a list. So it's a single column, comes as a list. I just want to do the max. So there's a function list.max, ready to split. Okay, so that number three is the maximum number, that dynamic number. Um, I could just leave this here, or I could copy this code and paste it over when I do that split. It's really up to you. Um, I might leave it in here. Okay, so what if I want to leave it in here? Well, I'm just going to go FX, and rather than referring to n quals, I'm going to refer to ready to split. Okay, so you, I'm back here. And now I can split this column, right click, uh, split column by delimiter, and I click OK. And rather than, and that change type step, get you every time. So rather than referring to these things, get rid of the curly brackets and just refer to n quals and enter. And again, get rid of the change type step. So now it's splitting based on that maximum number. 
and I don't need that end quals column anymore. So I can right click and remove it. And there we have it. Another way of dynamically handling this. More elegant than the pivot and pivot, but that's a pretty good, good hack. Let me know what you think. Um, thanks for those of you who sent these um, solutions in. Lots of variations on this sorts of themes, lots of coding. People have done it in functions and various other ways. So there's no right or wrong way. This is just a couple of ways. So thanks for taking part. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Let others know about the channel. Please subscribe and I'll catch you later.